Hello, Homestead, and please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now for a moment of silence. Hello Homestead, I'm Haley Steed and I'm Casey Stanley and on today's edition of HHS In Depth, Sahar Mushraf tells us about the fall play that takes place tonight and tomorrow. Colby Shout brings us another edition of the Student Profile and Drake White will tell you about saving to your network folder from home. All of that and more on HHS In Depth for Friday, November 8th. I'll go to London town to go go. Oh, with the record selection and the mirror's reflection, I'm a dancing all with myself. Oh, when there's no one else inside, I'm in the crowd and lonely night. Well, I wait so long for my love vibration, and I'm dancing all with myself. Dancing all with myself. Dancing all with myself. Today we begin with a feature regarding tonight and tomorrow night's fall play. Here's HHS In-Depth reporter Sahar Moshev with more details. I'm Sahar Moshev reporting for HHS In-Depth here to talk with some actors about the fall play. What is the play about? The Mouse That Roared is a play about a country that decides to declare war on the United States uh, over wine. Uh, we go in not really having any type of weapon, we're just kind of winging it and we turn out to win and so it all kind of unfolds in this crazy mixed up story. Who is your character and tell us about them. I play Tully Bascom and he is a National Forest Ranger originally, but he gets uh, elected by the Duchess of the country, uh, Grand Fenwick, as the High Constable of the Expeditionary Forces. And he goes to war with um, the United States and leads the men into battle. My character is Count Mountjoy and he is a stuck-up aristocratic character. Um, he earned his title through heredity and he is more of a, the advisor to the Duchess of Grand Fenwick, the country, and I kind of relate to him just because he's kind of fun and kind of bossy. I play Gloriana the Twelfth, Duchess of Grand Fenwick. Um, she's a British, like, she's supposed to be 22, but she's kind of, I picture her my age. She leads the country, she's the queen, everybody listens to her, she's kind of this really, um, Spunky, I think would be the word to describe her, kind of free-spirited kind of girl. Uh, we both get along in the fact that we both really love the people around us and uh, we really care about um, what's going on, so. What would it mean to you to have a larger student body in attendance? It would mean a lot. It would mean uh, to me that um, the students actually care about the theater program because, um, I don't know, it just seems like not very many people care that much. and if a lot of the student body were there, it'd, it'd make me perform all that much better. Having a larger student body or just a larger audience in general is always good for the actor and cast as it is because when we rely a lot on the audience's reactions in order to fuel our energy in order to keep the play going. With whenever they left we know that we are doing a good job and that we are able to be understood and so that shows that we are on the right track and that we are going to do a good job. Why do you recommend this play? I recommend this show because it's um, surprisingly relevant to today how much we are in debt and but also how ridiculous some ideas can be in order to get a country out of debt. But it's also just a fun show to go see and it's just a lot of fun to watch and even be a part of. What have you done to prepare for your role? A lot of reading and rereading my lines. Uh, I've practice in front of my family. I'll have my mom just like sit down and I'll say my lines over and over. Um, I've done a lot of, I looked up the character online and got her perspective from different actresses who have played her on Broadway and um, that kind of thing and that helps a lot trying to get to understand your character a little bit more is to study and research all those different people who've done it before you so you can figure out how you yourself want to make it your own. The play will take place tonight and tomorrow at 7 p.m. in Homestead's Auditorium. Tickets are $5 for students and 7 for adults. Be sure to be there from 6.30 to 7 if you haven't already purchased your tickets at lunch. Be sure to come out and support your fellow students in the fall play.
I'm Sarah Michelle reporting for HHS In-Depth, back to you guys in studio. If you think that you know it all, or at least know about World War I, then it's time to sign up for Homestead's academic decathlon team. They need students from all grade levels. See Coach Stumpf in room 201 to sign up, or just log into My Big Campus and join the academic decathlon group at HHS underscore academic decathlon. Anyone who is requesting to bring a guest that is not a Homestead High School student to semi-formal, you must pick up a request form from the discipline office. This form must be completed and returned to the discipline office no later than Tuesday, November 26. The form requires the signature from an administrator of the guest school. And now here is HHS in-depth reporter Colby Schaup with another edition of the student profile. What's up Homestead? This is Colby Schaup for another edition of HHS ID student profile. Today I'm going to be talking to Meridian Prawl who got a chance to go to a master class taught by famous opera singer Marilyn Horn. So Meridian, how did you get the opportunity to work with Marilyn Horn and where did you hear about this opportunity? Well, um, Marilyn Horn was my voice teacher's voice teacher and um, my voice teacher teaches at University of Toledo um, and she set up the master class with Marilyn Horn about a year ago and um, I got to be one of the people who auditioned for it and I was one of the four people that made it. And a lot of times opera gets the reputation of being kind of, you know, boring, stuffy, and silly to some people. Why is it not that, and what is opera really? Okay, well, it's uh, definitely not. Um, it is silly, but for, like, a good reason. Because um, it's like, to me, it's the most unique way you could possibly tell a story. And, um... I mean, singing is my favorite thing in the world, and if you can just sing for like three hours straight, it's super awesome. And um, there's also different things about it that are very interesting, especially now in today's culture. For example, um, I'm a mezzo-soprano, and so I get to sing um, male roles sometimes, and they're called pant roles, and so that's kind of funny because I get to... I don't know, wear pants and sing male roles and that's just kind of, you know, I'm not an ingenue. It's kind of fun. Uh, you say opera is the most unique way to tell a story. Uh, how is that and why do you think that is? Um, opera is really unique because, um, you know, first of all, you're singing the whole time and um, I think that singing is one of the best ways to communicate emotion. Um, and opera is just, you know, it's all about the music. It's not, there's, I mean, there's, of course, like the spectacle of it all, but there's, it's mostly just the music, and that's just the best thing ever. Okay, last question. Uh, would you be able to sing Thanks for Watching HHS ID? Now back to you in the studio. Okay. Thank you for watching. HHS ID, see you back in the studio. Students, Homestead High School will be hosting a financial aid night on Thursday, November 14th at 6.30 in the community room. This meeting will cover the different varieties of financial aid available to college-bound students, including student loans, grants, and scholarships. Be sure to tell your parents about this meeting and make plans to attend. This event is open to all Homestead students. Juniors and seniors, the following colleges will have a representative visiting Homestead. If you would like to attend one of these meetings, please sign up in Student Services and get your pass. Tuesday, November 12th, Augustana College and University of Finley. And Thursday, November 14th, Spring Arbor University. If you enjoy frozen yogurt and like to support fundraisers, on Tuesday, November 12th, you should take a quick study break with your friends and head to Yo-Yo's for frozen yogurt. Fifteen percent of the profits from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. will go towards helping Model UN raise funds for the Chicago International Conference. Hope to see you there. Attention Art Club, if you would like to order a t-shirt for this year, please sign up with Mrs. Jones by today. Shirts will be $5, money is due when shirts arrive, and you will be tie-dyeing this year. Attention Network and Art Clubbers, you will be collaborating together for your meetings on Monday, November 11th and Tuesday, November 12th from 2.45 to 4 p.m. You may go to one or both. You will be working together to create Be The Change bracelets. Please see Mrs. Jones with any questions. Drama Club Unite. Go to Drama Club Wednesday, November 13th in Mrs. Maluli's room immediately after school until 3.15. You'll be playing games, having fun, and discussing your holiday party. And now here is another edition of Tech Talk with Drake White. Oh, it's up. Thanks. Yeah, I found your problem. There's an R key in your terminal. These pesky keys get everywhere. Oh, there you guys are. I guess that means I'm Drake White reporting for HHS In Depth, and here's another edition of the Tech Talk. Hello. Drake, we need a tech lesson now. I'll be right there.
Do you ever have trouble accessing your network files from home? Do you want to learn how to access your network files from home? Well, pay attention to these easy steps. First, what you want to do is navigate to the Southwest Allen County Schools website and navigate to the Resources and Information section and go to the For Students section. Once that's loaded, you want to scroll down and you want to click Network Folder. You can also click Network Folder Instructions if you don't understand this video and read how to do it there. But here you can click Network Folder and then you want to continue to the web page and type in your username and password. And once that's all done, you'll be faced with this page. Now, if you want to download a file, you can click the arrow and check that and then you can go to file and click download it'll ask if you want to open or save it you can just click save or open whichever one you prefer and if you want to upload a file from your computer onto your network folder from home you go to file upload and then you browse for the file and then you click upload i'm drake white and this has been another edition of the tech talk back to you in the studio every boy wanting to participate in swimming and diving must have an ihsaa physical and concussion waiver on file in the athletic office Tryouts for boys swimming is Monday, November 11th at 3 to 4.30 p.m. and Tuesday, November 12th at 3 to 5 p.m. And for boys diving, it is Monday, November 11th at 3 to 4.30 p.m. For everyone and anyone who uses Twitter, follow the Spartana at the Spartana by November 20th in order to be entered for a raffle to win one of four prizes. Stop by room 622 for details. Boys basketball tryouts begin on Monday, November 11th. Seniors, juniors, and sophomores will be held from 3 to 5.30 freshmen from 7 to 9. All players must have their physicals turned in to Mr. Uptegrove before participating. The Girls Cross Country Awards will be held on Tuesday, November 12th in the 9th grade Academy Seminar Room. The awards will begin at 6.30. All cross country issued warm-up jackets and uniforms must be returned to Coach Wiss or Coach Behrens prior to the awards presentation. No uniforms or warm-up jackets will be accepted that evening. No awards will be given without the return of the uniform and warm-up jacket. Well, that wraps up this edition of HHS In Depth. I'm Casey Stanley. And I'm Haley Steed. And as always, today we leave you with a song only heard on our high school radio station, The Point 91 FM. Have a great weekend, and we will see you next week.